Hello and welcome. My name is Navaris, and today I would like to speak to you about the Magicka Sorcerer build for the Dragon Bones DLC. So there are some differences between this build and the build I was using in the Clockwork City patch. Uh, the health is still low, so the same situation as before. However, uh, this time I would advise not using max health, max magicka food, and that's because we still uh, will have issues with sustain. However, we want to reduce the number of heavy attacks we're doing to uh, optimize the damage output for the build. So the best way to reach a, he a safe health um, threshold uh, between 16 and 17k health is by either moving some points in the attributes from magicka into health, uh, roughly 8 to 10 points should do the trick um, or using a set bonus so you could change the Alambra set out for Valken Scoria and that's actually a smart move uh, because in a trial situation it's very likely that you'll have enough lightning damage uh, to give you the concussion and minor vulnerability that you would benefit most from using the Alambra set instead plus it gives you that one set uh, bonus one piece bonus uh, of max health um, the third option is to use an enchantment so you could attach a health enchantment to your Alambra's piece and then the damage shouldn't be uh, too much less um, but I really wouldn't advise changing to max health max magic of food unless you have a lot of synergies in the group um, or you know that you can sustain with that food um, so I just want to mention as well that this build isn't my own Many people have been using this uh, build, this patch, and there are some excellent build videos out as well. Um, but the reason I'm promoting it is because uh, some of the people who follow me will not be aware of this. Um, but also, I just want to cover the builds that I'm using and uh, also try out some different setups later on in the patch as well, um, just for you guys to see. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to cover several different things. Uh, firstly, I'll be covering the DPS parses. Uh, I'll then be covering the gear setup, the skill points, champion points, and then I'll finish it off with uh, rotation. Um, if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments section below, and thank you very much for your support.
Okay, so on the front bar I'm using the Asylum's Perfected Inferno Staff uh, with a Shock Damage Enchantment and an Infused Trait. Um, so on every second cast of a Force Pulse or Crushing Shock I get the Burning, Concussion and Chilled status effects. So that's this skill here, Force Pulse. And on the back bar I'm using the uh, Maelstrom's Lightning Staff. Um, so that's an Infused Trait with a Berserker Enchantment. Um, and also the set bonus is that every light and heavy attack deals additional damage. Um, so that's in conjunction with this skill here, uh, Blockade of Storms. Okay, so the next set piece is uh, Alambris. I have two pieces of Alambris. Um, the second set piece uh, makes it particularly strong, but you could also use Valken Scoria. I'm also using five pieces of Mechanical Acuity, uh, which is a crafted set you attain in Clockwork City. Uh, and also three pieces of Moon Dancer. All have spell damage enchantments and all of the armor pieces have magicka enchantments on them. I'm actually running 5-1-1 so that I benefit most from the Undaunted Metal passive, uh, just shown here, so I get 6% more bonus to my base stats. Okay, so let's talk about the skill setup. Uh, at the moment, on the front bar, I'm running Haunting Curse. It's a particularly powerful move um, because it has two bursts and it only has to be recasted very infrequently. So after 3.5 seconds, one burst. After 8.5 seconds, the second burst. You can only use this once uh, at any time. So it's not an AOE ability, even though it does have some splash damage. Um, the next skill is Crystal Fragments. It's important that when you use this skill, you don't hard cast the ability. So I'll just demonstrate just now. Okay, so that's when it's procced, it's much cheaper. And that's when it's not procced. So the damage is going to be less and it will also be more expensive if we hard cast. So only use that when it's procced in between the Force Pulse um, spam. So you also have Inner Light here, uh, it's important because we get 5% more maximum magicka. Um, we also get 2% uh, I think uh, for just this skill uh, in the magicka controller. Uh, we get a current 4% um, but I'll explain that in a moment. We also have Bound Aegis uh, which gives me 8% more max magicka. And then finally Shooting Star, so that's the other Magius Guild ability and contributes to the other 2%. So on the back bar, I have Blockade of Storms, uh, as I mentioned earlier, works well in conjunction with the Maelstrom staff. Um, the second uh, AoE ability I have is Liquid Lightning. Um, this is one of the strongest skills in the Sork's arsenal, um, so it's a very important skill to have. Inner Light, uh, just to get more Max Magicka. I have Elemental Drain here at the moment, but that's because I've been testing quite a lot. Um, so what you would actually do is replace that skill um, with the uh, shield available to us in the Daedric Summoning. So either Empowered Ward or Hardened Ward. I use Empowered Ward because it gives me more sustain in a trial situation. Bound at Aegis has to be double slotted, but that's another 8% maximum Magicka. And then finally Thunderous Rage, so that's the strongest AoE in the game uh, and very important in a Sork uh, arsenal. Okay, so let's go over the champion point setup. At the moment I have 48 points into Elfborn, 56 points into Elemental Expert, 30 points into Spell Erosion, 31 points into Master at Arms, and then I have 75 points into Thaumaturge. I'm using this at the moment because I've found it more beneficial in the testing. Uh, however, I am very keen to hear your results. Uh, perhaps you've done a group parse and found that uh, 75 points was a DPS loss. But at the moment I'm benefiting from using this for the exploiter bonus, even though it's been reduced. Um, so this is the rest of my CP. It's not completely optimized and I believe there's actually a couple mistakes in the green tree. So I'll put the proper CP setup as well uh, in the video description. Okay, so let's move on to the rotation section of the video. 
at the moment I'm just showing a very brief guide um, it's not too complex uh, so basically you do six spammables on the front bar and two on the back bar when you need to sustain uh, you do a heavy attack and then four spammables on the front bar as well as the two attacks on the back bar so just to show you um, at the moment I'm using the apprentice Munda stone and I'm also using witch mother's potent brew the health isn't exactly ideal so you would have to adjust this for a trial initially I use elemental drain inner light haunting curse and then my destruction staff ultimate the two AOEs and then six uh, attacks on the front bar alternating between crystal fragments and force pulse the second time round I know that the haunting curse needs to be reapplied and I know that elemental drain is nearing the end of its duration so I need to reapply elemental drain right now and then get back to the front bar haunting curse now since the uh, effect has played out and since sustain is becoming a bit of an issue uh, I only do four um, spammables on the front bar before doing a heavy attack to regain some of the um, magicka. So reapplying Haunting Curse, six spammables. And because of the duration of this fight, I know that I won't be able to use the uh, Destruction Staff Ultimate again. So I know that as soon as Shooting Star is available, I will use that. So uh, that's the general rotation. Um, I'd like to hear more from you guys, so if you haven't already, um, please consider joining uh, me on Facebook uh, or the Discord channel. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider that as well. And thank you very much for watching my video. Um, your support is greatly appreciated.